was the original mid-engine supercar. It started a war between Ferrari and Lamborghini that still rages today. Some say it's the most beautiful car ever made, and I'm one of them. Everybody knows Lamborghini's freaking amazing. And you know what kicked it all off? A car with eyelashes. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Lamborghini Miura. My best friend Jay Leno's got two of them. I'm really excited about this episode because it's brought to you by my favorite car company, Lamborghini and Gameloft, to launch a new racing video game, Asphalt 9 Legends. The Terzo Millennio concept car is exclusively available in Asphalt 9 Legends, which is totally free to play. Plus, Gameloft is sending me and one of you to Italy to check the real thing out in real life. Stick around to find out how you can win the trip. We've already made an episode on the history of the entire Lamborghini company, and you've already watched that, right? What? You didn't? Well, check it out right there, you bozo. Anyway, to quickly recap, Ferruccio Lamborghini was a rich businessman who made tractors. He drove Ferraris, but he wasn't super thrilled with the comfort and reliability of said Ferraris. So he decided, like a normal man, to start his very own luxury sports car company. But in 1965, barely a year into making the successful new 350 GT, Lamborghini's team of young engineers were already getting in to make race cars instead of straight cars. Jean Paolo Dallara was like, man, Ferruccio just wants us to design front engine touring cars and not race cars. And Paolo Stanzani was like, wouldn't it be awesome if he let us build a racier mid-engine car that could win at the track? And New Zealand transplant Bob Wallace was like, well, maybe we could work on making a more race-inspired street car in our free time after work. When they presented their idea to Lamborghini, he said, sure. Why not? Yay! Thanks, Ferruccio! All right, all right. You knuckleheads, get out of here. Oh, love those guys. So the guys excitedly got to work putting together a concept. They knew it had to be mid-engine because all of the best race cars were. A few mid-engine cars were running around the streets too, like the Ford GT40. But nobody else was making a mid-engine supercar just for the road. Their first idea was a longitudinal mid-engine three-seat design with the driver sitting in the center. This was almost 30 years before a little car called the McLaren F1 actually made good on that. Then the guys realized the only thing they had to work with was a massive 3.9 liter V12. If they mounted that engine in the traditional longitudinal orientation behind the driver, the car's wheelbase would be too long. So they measured how long their V12 actually was and figured out they could just turn it sideways. Delara, Stanzani, and Wallace had a mid-engine transverse mounted V12 show car chassis called the P400 ready for the 1965 Turin Salon. P400 stood for Posteriore Four Litre. You know what Posteriore means? That butt naked chassis without any skin on it impressed enough gawkers at the show that a few placed orders for the future car without even knowing what it would look like. Since the chassis generated interest at the Turin show, Lamborghini decided to have design house Bertoni work on the car's body ahead of the 1966 Geneva Motor Show. But nobody bothered to check and see if the engine fit. Um, this engine won't fit in here without some mods. What? We don't have time for that. Just throw some sandbags in there and bolt the hood down. Despite not being able to see an engine, the new Lamborghini was the star of the show. And no wonder. What Gandini came up with was not only drop dead gorgeous, it was downright timeless. A pointy shark nose flowed smoothly into the sexiest waistline to come out of the 60s. It was like Sarah Jessica Parker of Cars. Well, obviously I just think it's wrong to make fun of anybody's physical appearance. In a hat tip to Ferruccio Lamborghini's love of bulls, the doors looked like bullhorns from the front. Yeah, the headlights were fitted from a Fiat 850 Spider, but they looked better here. When they weren't lit up, they laid flush against the body for a streamlined appearance and better aerodynamics. What, you get to drive faster during the day or what? The eyelashes gave it that extra little something something. And I'm not talking about those fake lashes you see on cars today. No, these were out natural, just like mine. 
I'm like Bambi. Who shot my mom? My friend is a skunk. They called it the Mura after the infamously aggressive Spanish fighting bulls and Lamborghini's buddy who bred them, Don Eduardo Mura. They gave it one of the coolest badges ever and kicked off a tradition of naming models after fighting bulls that continues today. To fit all those mechanicals under the sleek clamshell, they crammed the transmission into the engine sump. So they both shared the same oil. The glorious V12 was lifted from the previous 400 GT model, but they gave it higher compression and eked out 350 horsepowers. And the sound of that engine behind your head? Magnifico. And I would know because my best friend Jay Leno has two of them. The production car was lightweight and had way more power than the Ferrari 275 GTB. That let it sprint to 60 miles per hour in six seconds. And it cruised to a top speed of 170 miles per, making it the fastest car in the world. It was an immediate success, even though it was four times more expensive than a Jaguar E-Type. Only 275 were made from 1966 to 1969, and the rich and famous quickly snapped them up. Even British fashion model Twiggy ordered one, with custom orange racing stripes over lime green paint. Did I mention that my best friend Jay Leno has two of them? Because demand was so high, the P400 was rushed to market in 1966. The tires were too skinny, and it didn't handle the corners that well. The fact that the gas tank was mounted in the front and the nose got continually lighter as the fuel level dropped did not help with that problem believe me my best friend Jay Leno has two of them but worst of all they became notorious fire hazards Lamborghini had used Weber carburetors that were designed for racing not the street when the Mira sat idling at a stoplight or wherever you idle, the space above the throttles filled up with gas. And if it splashed down on the manifold, it would ignite when the car started accelerating again. Luckily, this didn't doom production, probably because YouTube didn't exist yet and the world didn't have instant access to videos of mirrors burning to the ground. It's the saddest thing you've ever seen. In the arms of the <laughs> <laughs> the next version of the Mira, the P400S, was introduced at the Turin Motor Show in 1968. As with most mid-cycle refreshes, it got minor updates like chrome trim, power windows, more luggage space, and optional AC, which I could use right now because it's 150 degrees outside. They also gave it 20 more ponies. Why do they say horsepower? I mean, wouldn't they say bull power? <laughs> Anyway, from 1969 to 1971, they sold 338 P400 S's to more rich and famous people like Eddie Van Halen and Miles Davis, who apparently crushed his during a nose beer binge. Drugs are bad, okay? In 1970, engineer and development driver Bob Wallace, remember from before, built one FIA race spec Mira called the P400 Yotka to be used as a test mule for future improvements. He pumped up output to 440 bull power. Bull power, trademark. Intellectual property, trade for don't it? Added front and rear aero and put on fatter tires. He moved the fuel tanks into the side sills for better balance. Then he put the Mira on an 800 pound diet, dropping the weight to a mere 1,800 pounds by using aluminum body panels, plexiglass windows, fixed headlights, lightweight wheels. After beating the crap out of it for a year, dad, it was sold to a local shop. And guess what they did with it? locked it up and waited for it to become worth $1 billion. Actually, a mechanic totally took it out to impress his girlfriend and immediately balled it up, turning it into a barbecue. What else did you expect? In 1971, Lamborghini took what they learned from the Yota and made the biggest improvements to the Mira with the P400 SV. They produced only 150 SV models, making 385 bull power through improved cam timing, bigger valves, and modified carbs. That hurt the fuel economy so much that they offered a bigger gas tank as an option. The nose was lowered, just like Miles Davis, and the rear was raised slightly to reduce lift. It lost the flirty eyelashes, but got wider rear fenders to fit new, nine inch wide rear wheels and beefier Pirelli rubber. That was all great, but when people heard about the Yota crash in the news, 
They wanted a hopped up model, not that plain old SV. That would have cost Lamborghini too much. So they made a handful of factory modded P400 SVJ Muras for special customers. The Shah of Iran loved his so much that he hired an armed guard to watch over it. In 1995, it was sold off to Dubai like all supercars are. And then somehow Nicolas Cage bought it in 1997. He probably sold the Declaration of Independence for it. Other than the racy Yota that Bob Wallace built in his spare time, Lamborghini commissioned only one other one-off Mira over the years, where Tony built them a light blue P400 Roadster prototype for the 1968 Brussels Auto Show. The windshield was extra raked, making it look lower than the already super low coupe. The side vents were bigger. The entire rear end was unique, and they even stiffened the chassis to account for the removal of the roof. But they never actually even made a roof or side windows for it, cause it was just a show car. <laughs> In 1969, Lamborghini sold the Roadster to International Lead and Zinc Research Corporation, which provided different kinds of metals and alloys to the car biz. To show off their wares, they zinc and chrome plated the crap out of the Roadster, painted it a very 70s forest green and renamed it the ZN75. After being sold to different owners around the world for the next several decades, the car landed in New York in 2006, where it was restored to its original baby blue glory. It's the rarest of OG Lamborghinis and is now valued at eight to $10 million. That's like half of what I make for every episode. Lamborghini only built 764 Miras. If you ask me, it's not nearly enough. They're incredible, and no other car has had a bigger influence on supercars as we know them today. Bonjour to win a trip to meet me, your boy James, in Italy, and see how modern Lamborghini supercars are made. Download the free Asphalt 9 Legends game for iOS, Android, and Windows, and play the A9 Legendary Trips event. Go to gmlft.co backslash legendary trips for all the details and share an in-game action screenshot at the link below by August 19th. It's gonna be lit. I hear they got pizza over there. Hit that mother subscribe button. You like Lamborghinis? Well, check out this other episode of Up to Speed on Lamborghinis. To see me drive an Aventador, click this little guy right here. Follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. I'm gonna eat this dog and go to bed. I love you.